Well, welcome back, folks. Now, if you watched last week's live, you'll know that I've been cooped up in the house for the last uh, nearly a month, actually, almost exactly a month since the Euros. I haven't been out fishing. Um, broke my toe, uh, dropped a radiator on that while I've been renovating the house, so I've been rewiring and plumbing that. Uh, it's been sapping all of my time and money. So I haven't been fishing since the Euros, um, and as much as I love Sarah, Jack and the boys, I've been going a little bit stir-crazy. So half past six this morning, I decided that uh, I needed a day off, um, get out, wet a line, um, and uh, yeah, just get some fresh air and a bit of headspace. So, um, obviously, broken toe, um, first time fishing in a while, I just wanted to come somewhere where I knew there was good fishing, um, nice, easy, comfortable mark, um, and yeah, we can just chill out and unwind a little bit. So on that note, welcome to Mostyn. <laughs> um, the irony of that, if you're new to the channel, is that Mostyn has never been kind to me. It's well known for big place. It's well known for rays, congas. Uh, all I ever seem to do is snag up. So um, combine that with the fact that it's got, well, moon-like surface uh, covered in lichen and all sorts of slippy stuff uh, and actually just over there is where I slipped over one time and smashed the life out of my fury um, I can forgive you for thinking that I've completely lost the plot however having said that I do take on board a lot of you guys comments um, it is when I looked at the tides this morning they are the smallest tides of the month um, we've got now about two and a half hours to low water. Um, you can see, maybe just see in the GoPro, the sandbar starting to uncover behind the um, the little boat here. Um, but I don't think we're going to lose too much more water. Um, it's fairly calm. The wind's coming over the top, so there's hardly a breath of wind where we are. Uh, to the point where I'm considering taking this off. However, there is the odd um, bit of drizzle coming through now and then. Other than that, the weather's fairly settled. Uh, it hasn't rained that much this week um, over here, so I'm hoping there's not too much fresh water in the D. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, I think I've taken on all your advice. It's pretty much spot on. Um, so, yeah, I've managed to get my foot in my boot. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll come back out of it. It's... Uh, it's still fairly swollen um, I'll throw up a picture in a second so if you are squeamish look away uh, basically what I did is I dropped a two meter radiator um, it was super Saturday I was watching the, the rugby games six nation games uh, and Italy had just finished battering Wales uh, and I'd got one radiator left to hang and I thought in my head leave that wait till Sarah's here we'll do it tomorrow because <laughs> it's not particularly heavy it's only like 30 odd 40 kilos oh hello That's a bite. That looks like could have us first fish. Um, so yeah, very quickly, two meter, 40 kilo radiator. Uh, thought, just wait till Sarah's here tomorrow. It's not particularly heavy, it's just bloody awkward. Uh, picked it up, carried it over, went to hang it, dropped it straight down on my foot uh, and completely shattered my big toe. So from the top, it doesn't look too bad. Um, you can see all the crazing where the bones broke, uh, but then from the side, it's, uh, it's done a fair bit of damage. But the consultant says there's not really a great deal to do with it, just leave it. Uh, it should, the joint's intact, um, so it should just heal itself, as long as I'm careful with it. Obviously, I don't think he specified how careful. Uh, like I said, I finished rewiring and plumbing the house, and now I'm out fishing with it what, three weeks, well, less than three weeks later. So... Um, it will be a fairly steady session for me today. Hopefully we can get some fish. That first bite was a good sign. Um, let me talk you through the tackle. So the, the one that we've just had that bite on um, is the Akios Air Power. On there I've got a pulley panel rig um, just with a whole squid at the minute. Uh, that one will be targeting the bigger stuff so that will be targeting congas and rays. The rod closest to me is the Akios Fury. FX420, that is going to target the smaller stuff, things like place, flounder, 
um, and on there I've got a three hook flapper just with some worm baits. Um, pen spin fisher reels as always straight through with 90 pound braid today uh, on this mark like I say it is snaggy out there um, I have got rotten bottom links I'm hoping where we are now um, I've been told that this is relatively snag free if you're fishing um, over low water as you'll see I am a fair way away from the water uh, it does get quite rocky. I can get down to the water, but I just thought, save my toe the aggro of hobbling around on that all day. What I'll do is I'll just make my way down when I want to retrieve. Other than that, like I say, conditions seem spot on. We are just getting a bit of drizzle um, coming through now, so the hood's going to go up in a second. I know that I put some people off, but that's not my bag. We're out here. Uh, I've been going stair crazy in the house. We're out here and we're fishing. Now the bait wise, we've got pretty much everything we want to chuck at it today. So I've called in that D side tackle. Give me some fresh, fresh blow lug. Now they did say that these are getting past the best. Um, they're four days old now, so they're about to go in the freezer. So I managed to convince them to sell me some of those. And then if I bring you into the cool box, Tell you what, this cool box is pretty good as well. Picked it up from Go Outdoors the other week for the Euros. We've got Sam's and squid. We've got, now this is from the dog food place. We've got mackerel, kilo bag of mackerel for a three quid, I think it is. And then we've got a bag of herring. Same stuff. Um, and I'll show you, I mean, they're completely untreated, fresh frozen, fresh frozen. Uh, and I've got some blueies, and last but not least, some sand eel. So we've got pretty much everything we want to chuck at it, really. Like I say, one rod, I'm going to target the bigger stuff with the rays and congas, and on the fury, I'm just going to go flatty bashing. Um, I would love to get a nice flounder. I'd be ecstatic if I got a nice place. Absolutely ecstatic. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll wait and see how we get on. So I tell you what, while that's doing what it needs to do, let me uh, put you over here. We'll get these worm baits swapped instead. <sighs> Lado just down the way. I was just saying he's been here three hours and he's not had a knock. So I'm doing considerably better than he is. Oh, come on, get out of that mud. Didn't realise how much you use your toes until you ain't got them. Come on, get out. Don't make me come all the way down there, please. Why oh, you pain in the arse. There we go. Let's go and get this changed. Have we had any knocks on that big one yet? I need to run him while I chuck this out, because what I want to show you is I ain't chucking this one far. Chucking this one far at all. Come down here. I'm just going to try... I did have it in between the boat and the sandbar. I just want to put it right on the bow of that boat. Let me move over here a little bit so I don't risk tagging my own line up. But I just want to put it somewhere around about there-ish. All right, well, I'll give that rod another five minutes. Well, it was absolutely slinging it down rain. But a, a good shower. Let's see if anything is to come of this. I don't think so. Nope. Oh, 
little bit of weight there though. Might be. I've got so much swirling around. Doggy, is it? Is it just my bait? I don't know. Just a big old crab. I'll have to go and fetch this one as well. Oh. Right then, I thought I'd bring you back for a little baiting up tutorial. So, like I say, we're going to go for squid and bluey next. Now, I'll show you the way I do baiting up. I use a, a bait mate tool just to make things nice and neat. What I've done is uh, got a squid tube and just sliced it in half. I like to put the guts to the outside. We talk about getting scent in the water and stuff. Um, and for me, there's no better way of getting scent in the water than turning your baits inside out. Now, what I've done is taken a bluey. Now, I normally chop them off right up at the top towards the uh, towards the gill plates and get rid of the head. But Jason, Eastbourne fisherman, uh, he swears by using the head. So, what I'm going to do is take him by his word. He's had a few rays already this year. Uh, and then just basically wrap it up like that. And I'm going to find wherever I've put my me, uh, me baiting elastic. An over elastic. Yeah, plenty around the top because that's where your hook's going to latch into. And then just work your way back down. And then, so on these bait mate tools, what you're supposed to do is you clip your hook under there. And then lie the bait on top. What I like to do is I, I get rid of that because sometimes it just makes things a lot more complicated. So I'll bait it up on here and then I'll take it over, I'll loop the hook through the top and then what I tend to do is just leave a little bit of that squid flapping about and I'll put the circle hook, the top circle hook through there. What I do is just loop it through that elastic that we've put in and then swap hands. Just looped it through and I just like to pinch the line there and then go round, 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 round and that what do us? Last it back in my pocket, and then, like I say, you just slide that off, nice and gentle. And that top little flap bit, look. All I do is I'm just go with my circle hook, because the idea of the circle hook is that the circle can move, and just find its way into the top lip, and there you have. A lovely ray bait like I say that circle hook can just move around I just use a little bit of um, rig tube to keep that in place that'll move around nice and freely the bait can move around it's almost like a dongle dare I say it well we've got about half an hour left now to low water uh, I've had a couple of really good knocks on the uh, on the big panel rig but nothing nothing actually taking the bait uh, there's a guy just headed round the bay, um, I think he must be off to fish the point over by the boats, which I did have a good long look at earlier, but I don't fancy that walk at the minute. That certainly seems to be the more popular mark, um, but it is very, very mucky over there. I fished there once. You need to be in waders. You need to be in clothes that you can just jet wash off. Although I've said that, this rain is fairly persistent at the minute. I think it's probably set in for the afternoon. Um, so you probably get washed off while you're fishing anyway. But come rain or shine, there is blue skies dotted about. Come rain or shine, it is good to be back out. I hope you guys are all keeping well. Me not being out and fishing, like I mentioned earlier, has been getting to me. Um, the dogs obviously haven't been getting walked, so I haven't even been getting out with the dogs either um, and yeah I'd say I'd say over the last week or so I've probably been a four or a five out of ten um, not through anything major just uh, call it fatigue whatever you want to call it but um, yeah just uh, just gradual that dripping tap it's all been building up so here I am just letting off a little bit of steam um, and, uh, and it's
clean the uh, clean the lens off a little bit. So um, I think things should start to turn on. The, the tide's starting to come in. The sandbar at the back of me here is starting to cover over again. So on the Fury, what I've done is I've retired that scratching rig, and what I'm going to do is just put on this two hook loop rig. So the top one. There's a panel set up and on there you can see I've got squid and blacks and the bottom is a single hook and on there I've just put on a strip of mackerel and a seventh ounce weight. I've just noticed my rod stand almost blew over then so what I'm going to do is uh, anchor that down as well because the last thing I want is my rod stand going over. So let's get the old bungee cord out quickly. back uh, unfortunately whilst I uh, managed to secure the rod stand the GoPro has gone over I think you're still recording um, the other day I got a comment on the live about um, somebody was concerned about their Fury FX4 uh, FX435 I think it was um, not being able to cast six ounce weights and feel like it's gonna snap so as I've just shown you, I've just put a seven ounce on that loop rig with two baits on. Um, and if I can get the GoPro to stay up, I shall show you. Uh, mine's is the 420, but it's got the power tip on, so it's a similar sort of modulus. Um, it's a similar sort of blank. Uh, and let me try and wedge you down there so you don't go arse over tit again. Like I say, Akios FX 420, seven ounces, two baits. I'm not going to put this on massive lob, but I could get a little bit of stick just to show you that it will handle it. I'll come over this way before. The tide is obviously running left to right, so I want to go left slightly. I also don't want to catch my uh, my rod, and I want to try and get some reasonable footing with this toe. Oh no! think at that I've just gone straight over that boy oh no don't think I'm gonna get that back oh. nuts I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that in that camera angle but just out there there is a little boy where that boat was moored up to earlier and I think I'm pretty sure I mean my weight landed probably about two foot to the left of it but I'm pretty sure with the wind and the tide that anchor rope's going to be going that way somewhere and I'm fairly certain I'm going to have gone straight over the top of that boy line and I probably won't get that back which could be fun like I say I'm fishing 90 pound braid straight through that could be real entertaining trying to get that back. Well, apologies, folks. That's another blank on Mostyn. Um, I'm not. I'm not giving up. So you're going to see more. I'm sure. Um, I can't fish a mark that is a as well known and b as fishy looking as Mostyn and not come away with a fish so I am going to be back but not till the weather improves um, it's the wind is now gusting about 30 odd mile an hour straight in your face the rain has stopped at least but it's oh, bitter bitter in fact the van's rocking at the minute I don't know if you'll be able to hear the wind in the uh, in the camera but it is not pleasant um, certainly not the nice relaxed easy session that I wanted to come back and just break myself in gently um, my foot has never been more pleased to see me flip flops uh, yeah my foot is throbbing my hands are freezing um, and I'm going to go and get some food 
So, like I say, apologies, that's another blank, uh, but that is fishing. I am gonna have an absolutely mad summer. Um, we've got loads coming up. So we're going to Lanzarote in May. Before then, I wanna try and go over to Anglesey and have a weekend over in Anglesey. Ideally get down maybe the Bristol Channel. I'd like to say Chesil Beach, but I don't think I'm gonna get time to go that far. Um, between now and then, like I say, May we've got Lanzarote. June we've got two weeks over in Ireland, we'll be fishing over in Ireland. Um, I'm in the species hunt, if you haven't seen the live, I've bought a load of LRF gear as well, so I want to go after some micro species and do some species hunting stuff and get a bit more techie with that kind of thing. Because uh, some of the little species I think are actually really quite cool. Um, so I won't mind catching some of them, just having a double. I want to get out with the laws. I've got so much I want to do, I just need this foot to heal. So on that note, like I say, apologies, another blank, another blank on Mostyn. Um, I will learn, I won't learn. Um, I will be back, there will be more blanks. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you're all well. Um, take care of yourselves. Please try and do a better job than I'm doing. Um, and uh, until next time, take care and tight lines.